Hi, today I'm going to talk about pure shear and plane attention. And I'm going to examine if these two loading modes are in fact the same under certain conditions. So let's start by talking a little bit about pure shear versus uh, simple shear. So simple shear is an easy experiment to perform. You have a specimen and you basically just shear it along the top here. And um, you get the shear deformation in the specimen. The deformation gradient under these conditions is written at the bottom right here. Alpha is on the off-axis position here. Pure shear is a little different. Um, you basically take your specimen and you pull on it in the, off, in the diagonal uh, direction and you rotate it at the same time. As you can see on this uh, little schematic here. And the deformation gradient in this time is very similar to simple shear, except that it's one off-axis term here is also alpha. So alpha, alpha in, in the, these two off-axis positions, and here is just one of them. Um, what is the strain state in these two cases? Well, in simple shear, uh, we can calculate the strain using the equations here. These are Julia equations, and um, I apply an alpha of 0 0.4. I can calculate the results. We'll see that there's basically a, a shear response. Uh, here is the values that we get. And it's a little bit of, of an axial strain, too. In pure shear, we can do a very similar approach. We can calculate it using the deformation gradient, uh, multiply it with its transpose, take square root of the logarithm of that to get the log logarithmic strain, the true strain. And we'll see that the strain is also, in this case, dominated by this shear term. But they're very different, right? We'll see that there's clearly differences between simple shear and pure shear. The different shear experiments give different responses. So don't mix them up. Today, the focus is on the similarities between pure shear and planar tension. So what is planar tension? Well, it's a, it's a pretty interesting test. You take a specimen and you pull on it, as shown in the schematic. And um, you have, in this case, set up the experiment such that all deformations is vertical, up and down. No material is really supposed to move left and right. There will be something uh, changes in the thickness of the specimen. But otherwise, it's just up and down. So the question really is, how come the shear experiment on the left is similar to the planar tension test on the right? How could that be? This looks nothing like the same, right? So let's take a look at pure shear first. So the deformation gradient in pure shear is defined here on the top. What's interesting about deformation gradients is that it really is a linear transformation of a material. So I can apply a, a pure shear deformation gradient on a circle. Um, if I have an undeformed circle in blue here, what happens is that this circle will deform into some uh, different shape. And that's the red shape here. So it becomes an oval, as you can see. This is alpha is equal to 0 0.1. And the figure to the right is the same deformation that occurs uh, when I apply alpha 0 0.3. So there's a little bit more uh, distortion here. And I created these figures using the, the Julia code on the right, if you're interested in, in performing that as well. But that's how pure shear really works. How about plane attention? Well, plane attention has this deformation gradient here. How do we work with this plane attention deformation gradient and, and demonstrate that it's somehow similar to the pure shear? Well, this is how you do it. You take the deformation gradient and you rotate it. So the plane attention deformation gradient, you apply 45 degree rotation around the one axis. And if you do that, you have to introduce the rotation tensor Q, and it's written right here. And you perform a little bit of math. You can do this in, in Julia or some other uh, math uh, package. And what you will get is that um, if the displacements are small, if alpha is small, then you get the deformation gradient that's shown at the bottom here. And what's interesting is that this deformation gradient has 1, 1 on the diagonal terms here, and then the off terms are alpha, just like in pure shear. So what we've shown here, that a planar tension test is in fact the same as a pure shear test if you rotate the coordinate system 45 degrees and if the displacements are small and if the material is almost incompressible. Kind of interesting, isn't it? So to plot this out and compare it for different deformation uh, measures, I plotted true stress here versus deformation alpha. Alpha is it's like the engineering strain in, in the planar tension or the shear strain in the pure uh, shear experiment. And uh, to get the stress, I, I assume the material was neo-Hookian, has the Young's modulus of 1. And here is the, uh, the results. 
we'll see that we get a pretty good agreement between these two different loading modes in terms of converting back and forth if the strains are about 30, 40 percent. Uh, if they're more than that, there will, there will be some deviation and errors in, in the conversion. But otherwise, it actually works. It's kind of interesting conversion. So, summarize, pure shear is the same as plane attention if the material is incompressible, the formation is small, and then you can kind of work with this. But remember, that it's difficult to perform plane attention and pure shear experiments in real life. Uh, they're difficult experiments to do, boundary conditions are hard, etc. So what I do recommend is that if you do a plane attention experiment, always use DIC, digital image correlation, to verify that the strain state is what you expected it to be. So if you have any questions, you can ask them below.